want to read to you some scriptures. 1 Nephi 5, 130. He ruleth high in the heavens, for it is his throne, and this earth is his footstool. From James 5, 16. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. From Psalms 107, 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. From Moroni 7.29. My beloved hath miracles cease. Behold, I say unto you, nay. And finally from DNC 34.3b. For I am God and my arm is not shortened. And I will show miracles, signs and wonders unto all those who believe on my name. Pretty excited to be here with you this morning. Um, as I think back, I th my brother and I um, were ordained in, in 1993, but I think this is the first time that we've ever we've ever tag team a service like this. And um, my mom and dad are here too, and um, I'm just I'm privileged to to have good support. This morning, it's title of, this, of our time together, I'm calling God is Still on the Throne and Prayer Changes Things. I hope that you can tell that from my opening scriptures that God is on the throne. This is important to remember because there are many things occurring in the world that would cause our faith to fail and our hearts to quiver if we're not rooted in our trust and faith in the Lord. So this morning I, I have a series of experiences that I want to share with you that hopefully will remind you of how active the Lord is in our lives. We had a we had a lady at our at our branch that had terrible spasms in her feet, and one and one time they they were so bad they knotted up her feet that she she tore the tissues in her feet from the muscle contractions. She was she was facing surgery that had a seven month recovery time, and she just fretted how laid up she was going to be and. And how burden, burdensome she would be for her husband to take care of her and everything else. And she was really worried about it. I knew that she could be healed of the Lord because he is so capable. He's created a black hole with 10 billion suns inside of it. Certainly, he could take care of a little foot. I worked with her and her husband to to discuss maybe there was something in their, their hearts and their lives that were stopping them from receiving a blessing, maybe some sort of, of pride or unforgiven sin that the Lord wanted to root out. And they said, no, no, there, there isn't anything, and I believed them, and so we had a special prayer service, and she was administered to, and I really hoped that her foot would be better but it wasn't. So I didn't despair. I didn't uh, lose my faith. I waited to see what would happen with the surgery. And it turns out that it was much better than anyone anticipated. And she was, instead of recovering for seven months, she recovered for seven weeks. See, I had put God in a box I say, you're gonna heal, God, you're going to heal the lady or you're not. And I had not been open to a possibility that he could do something completely different. He is still on the throne. The earth and all of us are his footstool. Our pastor was healed from cancer or lymphoma twice. Uh, after the first time, he developed some, some new symptoms, 
And I don't, I don't understand all of this because I'm not the medical part of the family. But he, he had a new treatment that was experimental in nature and miraculously it was approved by the insurance company. They actually took part of his tissues and sent it away to have some uh, work done to it and they brought it back and implanted it into him and it, it made him better. Prayer changes things. There was a young man who crashed his motorcycle. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but somehow he was coming off the highway and didn't stop and ended up in a, on the ground in a grassy area with an elbow that was uh, bent the wrong direction. And when you're riding a motorcycle, it's kind of important to have both arms. So that was going to be a problem. But three, three mysterious and helpful people were instantly on the scene to help him. Now, were they the three? Mysterious and helpful people that we like to talk about that occasionally are available? I'm not sure. I don't know. But I do know that three people were there to help him. His elbow was shattered. Shattered. He needed orthopedic surgery. They put screws and bolts and much hardware in there, put it all back together, and he, he has recovered and has almost 100% range of motion in his elbow. And... At the same time this was going on, he entered into a period of strained relationship with his fiance. In fact, they, they broke off their wedding till they could get some things figured out. But all that's been restored, and in just a couple of weeks, they're going to get married. Prayer changes things. Just a couple of weeks ago, there was a young man who had an allergic reaction and was in the hospital. And it just so happened that his part of his family was able to be there with him because of some things that had gone on earlier in the day. The schedules changed and they were available to be with him. Things, as the evening wore on, things did not get better. It took a turn for the worse. And I found out after the fact that it was really serious. But prayers were offered from three different branches for this young man. He was administered to, and by 10 o'clock that night, he was fine. It was my nephew, Jeffrey. Some of you may know more about what happened. But people, there were so many praying for him to know that he was blessed. God is still on the throne and prayer changes things. There's a woman in our small group that had suffered with fibromyalgia for 29 years. Debilitating, painful disease that just leaves a person fatigued all the time and unwilling or unable to, to really function and be useful. She had struggled and suffered and sought the Lord for, for a healing, certainly believed that it was possible and was administered to and did not receive a blessing. But she felt like there was... Um, forgiveness and repentance that she needed to seek and offer in her life. She had moved here to uh, the independence from Ohio, and some of the people that she needed to forgive were former bosses. So she tracked them down and wrote them letters about the situations that occurred. So she was, she was serious and made a real effort 
to repent and offer forgiveness. We got together again for a meeting and she wanted to be administered to. So her husband and I laid hands on her and as her husband was praying, the Lord was speaking to me and he, he told me that when we were done that I needed to tell her to shake out her shoes. Because in my mind, I envisioned the Holy Spirit pushing this disease from her head down through her body and out her feet into her shoes. And I thought, God, that's ridiculous. And when the prayer was over, I opened my eyes and she had on flip-flops and I thought, whew, I don't have to do that. But then God reminded me. He reminded me of the great feeling of regret that I have had in times of my life when I have not listened to the Lord. So I, they, were, they were getting in the car, leaving the meeting. And I ran out the door and said, wait a minute. This is going to be weird, but I need you to shake out your shoes. And she said, okay. And she did it. And she said, uh, my arm feels weird. And she told her husband, come feel this. And he felt her arm and the knots and the tight muscles from the fibromyalgia that had been there just minutes earlier were gone. Friends, the Lord healed her of that chronic disease in my driveway. We spent the next 15 minutes rejoicing and weeping together. What a blessing this testimony is. And what a lesson in seeking repentance and forgiveness. And placing everything in the hands of the Lord. Oh, and then obeying when God tells you to do something no matter if it's strange or not. Here a couple of weeks ago, um, we heard about a young man who had was doing some work and he cut his foot with a chainsaw. And having run a chainsaw and before and cut wood, I... I could only imagine what that was like. He's a young husband and he has three kids and he's a provider of his family. They live in an RV because they're building a house. So in the middle of all this, daddy got hurt. My heart was greatly moved for their situation because there was a time in my life where I would cut wood or do anything to, to provide for my family. As I was self-employed, had some small children. So I had great compassion and I was scheduled to preside over the service the next Sunday. And just felt really moved to abandon the programmed order of worship. I cleared it with the speaker. I made sure that he was okay with what we were doing. And we just had a prayer service for this young man. Instead of, instead of speaking hour. I thought it would be a good idea to, to ask the young children of our branch to come down to the front and pray because their family has children and they would know each other and it might mean something to them. And one of the young one lads, in his prayer, he said, Lord, please help him not to need surgery. And if you could think, imagine what a, a chainsaw could do to a, an appendage like a foot, you might think that's a bold thing to ask. But nevertheless, in faith, believing that God was capable, so capable, of so many great and marvelous things, he prayed that prayer. 
I ran into this family yesterday at Menards, and I got an update. So it's not even 24 hours old. So he's doing great. He's wearing a shoe. Doesn't look like he has a limp. They're moving into their house in like today or this week or sometime. But his wife said, they've cleaned out the wound two times, but they've had to do no surgery. <laughs> Friends, prayer changes things. And God is still on the throne. I speak the name of Jesus over you. In your hurting and your sorrow, I will ask my God to move. I pray for your healing that circumstances may change. I pray that the fear inside will flee in Jesus' name. I pray that a breakthrough would happen today. I pray miracles over your life in Jesus' name. I pray for revival, for restoration of faith. I pray that the dead will come alive in Jesus' name. Have the dead come alive? Well, Let's get to the best part. Several years ago, um, there was a young man that moved, moved back to our branch from, from a distant location. And he was, he had been, how would I say this, making choices in his life that were contrary to what we would understand the will of the Father to be for his life. Just put it that way. He was very sick. He had developed quite an extensive drinking problem and had, had fallen down the stairs of his house and had lain there for many hours before his mother found him. He was near death because of that experience and the condition of the organs inside of his body. And there was um, great uncertainty about the future that this man would have. I was asked to come administer to him at the hospital along with another elder, and I had just gotten off work and was really unprepared to meet the Lord. And I, I said so, and I said to his mom, let's, let's have prayer together. So in the lobby of the hospital with everyone swirling around, going hither and there, we just prayed together in preparation for the administration. Did not know what to expect. This was during COVID days, and so there were only a certain number of people that were allowed in the room. And when I got in there, I was not prepared to what I found. This man was laying in a hospital bed, and he did not... He did not look anything like I had remembered him, and I did not know if he was going to live or if he was going to die. And so I confessed that to the Lord in my prayer, and I prayed both ways. God, if you are to heal him, please do. If, you are, if he's to die, please take him quickly. And it was hard to pray that. I'd never prayed for the Lord to take someone's life before. But I felt that it was important to, to say that in submission to the Lord. I wasn't sure after that what even was going to happen. And so I was quite eager to receive updates from the family. And he got better. He got out of the hospital. He has made a full recovery. He's employed. And you would never know. If to look at him today, that this guy had been so close to death. The dead are coming to life in the name of Jesus because God is still on the throne and prayer changes things. Now we get on to my favorite one of all. 
We have a young family at our branch who has um, several children, and early on in their, their family, their second, second child um, was born with a heart defect, came home from the hospital one day, and then went back to the hospital and passed away eight, eight weeks later. And I spent some time with the, the, the husband, the dad of that family, and over lunch hours and stuff, we would get together and share. And through that whole experience, I could see a, a transformation in that young man's life. He began to realize that there were things that were more important to him than um, the money or the worldly pursuits. And I, and I saw the Lord working. They had several other children, and about, I don't know, two and a half years ago, I guess, found out that they were expecting again and were excited until they found out that this baby was had the same heart defect. And the prognosis was that it would most certainly die. So the family asked for prayers and for administration, which we gladly provided, and they were on our hearts and in our prayers for months. And the baby was born, and we all were eagerly anticipating and had, you know, fingers crossed or whatever because we wanted to see what the Lord would do. See, the mother had great peace during this whole time, but other people were, weren't so sure. But the baby was born and was examined, and the heart defect was not as bad as what was expected. So the baby didn't die. And it went in for a checkup just a few weeks later and was cleared with almost no indication that there had even been a problem. So in this family's life, this baby went from almost certain death to, to life. The dead are come to life in Jesus' name. What do these things mean? I, I, I didn't make any of this up. I was near firsthand involved in all of these experiences. I'm telling you that God is on the throne and prayer changes things. You may have struggles in your life, your children, your, your parents, all of that. I just want to encourage you that no matter what is going on, God is available, and God is able. I hope that I hope that through listening to these experiences this morning, you will realize and recognize in your own lives how the Lord has worked. That's all I have to share with you this morning. My prayer is that in the name of Jesus Christ, that these things have ministered to you and that your faith has been renewed and your hope in the Lord and in his great kingdom that is just about to come forth. And never, never despair, never give up. Because why? Say it with me. God is still on the throne and prayer changes things. Thank you.